this time, Lord, let's not talk about me. Let's talk about you. It's time to have a little bit of empathy. Let's make it about you. It's easy to get self-centered. Let's talk about you. It's time to have a little bit of sympathy Let's make it about you I noticed we were doing our best today I noticed we were giving our all today gentlemen and welcome to another live stream broadcast for without spot or blemish ministry so glad everybody's here today today we're going to talk about the fear of demons is where they hide and thrive you know there's a lot to be said about how when we become christians movies and literature and the like have made us so fearful of demons in our past that we don't realize the authority that's been given unto us by jesus 
and God the Father. And Luke 10, 19, he says, Behold, I've given you power over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing by any means shall hurt you. And Mark 16 says, These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. So it's really, not to diminish it, but it's really not that big a deal for us um, to walk this earth knowing that there are malevolent spiritual beings in the spiritual realm, that thing, uh, beings that we can't see, but we know they're at work. And it's almost like living in a world where we know when we swim in the ocean, there's sharks and barracudas and manta rays and dangerous creatures there. We know that out in the jungles and woods, there's lions and tigers and, and bears. Oh my, <laughs> you know, there's, there's creatures on this earth. There's venomous, venomous snakes and spiders and insects and whatnot. And uh, I think people have learned to overinflate demons because they are like barking dogs with no teeth but they're only toothless against commandment keeping believers in jesus christ who are following him and obeying him he said if you love me keep my commandments and i'll send uh, the comforter and the comforter will be the father and the son abiding in us and we have to have the holy spirit because without jesus we can do nothing but through him we have been given all authority over the entire demon demonic realm including satan or lucifer himself so I'm kind of um, putting the cart before the horse. We need to pray first, and I'm, I'm kind of spilling the whole thing, but a lot of people only listen to the first two minutes, so why not tell the sum of the matter is that there's no reason for us to be afraid at all, and we should be fighting them, and there's no reason for us to think there has to be this once and for all deliverance of ourselves, and then we won't have to fight him again. If I could just get him out of my life completely right now, I'll never have to speak to the devil again or even acknowledge his existence. And that's just not the case because throughout our life, we live in a world where demonic malevolent beings are just part of the, for lack of a better word, the spiritual ecosystem. It is what it is. They are in this world and we as believers of Jesus Christ, these signs shall follow them. The first signs they shall cast out devils. It's our job to cast them out. But it's also our job not to inflate their power over what it really is, because what it is is compared to the power uh, that God's given us. It's nothing. It's nothing in comparison. We'd be given power over all of their power. So there's no power they have that can overcome our power as long as we're keeping those commandments and walking in the Holy Spirit. And then the word that God gives us to fight them is, uh, it's always victorious. And even when it seems it's not victorious, we just believe and have faith and keep moving. And if we need to self-check, if we have got sin in our lives or we're not keeping the commandments, then some area of sin of our lives, we, we look within, we, we check ourselves and we be sure um, that there's uh, no area of sin that they have a foothold or a stranglehold in. And being afraid of them, by the way, the title is, it's where demons hide and thrive. That fear of them is a sin because perfect love casts out, casts out fear. And we're not in perfect love with the Father and the Son when we have fear. And if we're afraid of them, we need to check ourselves for why. And then we need to stand up to them like any bully needs to be stand, stood up to. So um, that's the introduction. But let's go ahead and pray and then go dive a little deeper and cite some scriptures. So Father God, we just praise and thank you for this opportunity to come before you and to hear from your word and to hear from you. We thank you for revealing to us truths about the spiritual realm and how it is that you've given us authority over all of Satan and his minions, his demonic, malevolent devils and demons and whatnot, that you've given us power over all of them. And there's nothing they can do to hurt us when we're walking in your word. So I just praise you and thank you for showing us any area of our lives where we've compromised our walk with you and given them ground in our lives in order that uh, they can uh, live and, and move and have their have their being in our lives instead of you. And we ask, Father God, that you would just help us to repent and make things right so we can cast out even those demons that we've um, given ground to through sin. So, Father, we praise you and thank you for that. I ask that you take over this broadcast and let no flesh speak. I bind up all demonic spirits from affecting me or Samson here in the well in the studio here. I bind up all demonic spirits here or with the listener. I bind up the convolution of the word in my mouth or in the ears of the listener. I bind up any untruth from being spoken, any untruth from being received. And I loose in the name of Jesus that only truth would be spoken and only truth would be received. And I praise you, Father God, for leading this entire episode so that many people could come into 
the confidence in you and your word so that they can stand up against these malevolent bully demons and um, get the victory. I praise you and thank you for all these things in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. And I guess that's a good place to start that it's not by our own power. It's by the power of the name of Jesus. It does say these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. It's not in our own name, by our own authority, by our own power. It's by the power of that mighty, holy, righteous name of Jesus that you can command any demonic spirit to leave you and depart from you. And uh, that's the first um, element of all this so that you can be confident, not in yourself, because without Jesus, we can do nothing. But with the name of Jesus and walking in agreement with him and his word, there's no reason for you to be afraid, which again, gives more ground to demons. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the uh, blog I wrote today on withoutspotorblemish.blogspot.com. And maybe Chad will join us a little later. I've told him about this. He doesn't always have to join us. It's completely up to him. But he has a lot to say about deliverance, and he's, he's a big proponent of it too. It makes a huge difference in your life, and it helps you to walk in truth when you can command demons who are liars to leave you, and then you can receive more and more truth. So again, today's article is entitled, Fear of Demons, the Place They Hide and Thrive. Many people will convert to following God's word from false Christianity or from anything secular or any other religion, can have a misunderstanding about devils or demons that has in large part been propagandized by the satanic kingdom through media, literature, popular culture, and the false church itself. The misunderstanding leads to fear, one that says that demons are extremely dangerous and scary creatures you do not want to face. And if you do, you'll be sure to put yourself in great jeopardy. Another aspect of this is that they tried to promote is that if you do fight them and win, then you'll have completed the mission and won't have to contend with them ever again. This makes recently delivered Christians extremely troubled when evidence of demonic spirits arises. Again, they thought they were delivered and now the demons are back. No way. And this too leads to fear, a fear that gives them a place, the demons, a place to hide and thrive. And so... We're going to go through this much more, but even Jesus had to, throughout his ministry, speak to Satan to get behind him or to get the hints. It wasn't just a one and done thing for Jesus. So if it wasn't for him, why would it be for us? So we live again in an ecosystem, just as there are um, killer uh, beasts out there that can hurt you. There are spiritual beings that could hurt you if you didn't have Jesus in your life. And since you have Jesus in your life, and when you walk in obedience, you can fight those demons, command them to leave, and they must obey you. Um, so the propaganda from the satanic kingdom is either to make you afraid, that is very afraid, so you will try to limit interactions with demons altogether, and they also want you to forget they're even around, whereby the demons may continue their work unmolested. So they're trying to get you to say, oh, that's for other people, that's not for me. If I have an evil thought, I'll just take control of myself and I won't tell that spirit that brought the temptation or the thought to leave me. And when you go down that road of not engaging in spiritual warfare, it is more likely than not that you are going to be overcome. Even as a believer, you have to engage in spiritual warfare. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. And that is for yourself as much as for anyone else. It's almost like David when he fought the lion and the bear from stealing from his flock of sheep, when he went to go fight Goliath for the nation, he actually could fight with some modicum of authority because he had fought for himself. So we can't fight for others until we get uh, the dominion over this um, temple, <clears throat> temple that we manage. We're the managers, the high priests, and the kings of the temples that God has placed us in, which is our bodies. And we have, to, we have to remember that as we continue to um, live out these walks. We have to manage our thought lives. We have to recognize when Satan comes around to try to cause us either confusion or to believe a lie or to be deceived or to embrace sin, whether it's the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, or three categories of sin as John enumerated in First John chapter 3. We have to examine our thought lives and see where the enemy is fighting us on the battlefield, which is the mind. So that's number one. We want to make sure that we are in agreement with God's word. 
with his commandments. Jesus said again, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I'll send you a comforter, the spirit of truth that will lead you into all truth. So we want to believe the truth. We want to walk in truth. We want to walk in God's word and in his commandments. And then when we speak to those demons, they must obey us. Now, one such movie that promoted this satanic narrative about us being super afraid of the demonic realm was The Exorcist, a movie made in the 70s. The priests uh, that were uh, so, so-called so exorcists, and of course, priests are serving Satan and the mystery Babylon religion and Catholicism. So that's obvious, obviously an issue. But in the movie, the priests come to the home of a young possessed girl in an attempt to exorcise her demons. But instead, the demons are able to manifest in horrific and grotesque ways to toy with the priest and finally are only extracted after one priest is killed and the other tells the demons to enter himself in lieu of remaining the girl. And once this transference is accomplished, the priest then voluntarily hurls himself through a second story window that feeds down an additional height of several story staircase. I've been on that staircase. It's in DC near Georgetown. Thus the priest dies a horrible death. Linda, Linda, the girl is delivered though, and seemingly goes on to live a normal life afterward where you think she'll never have to deal with possession or demons again. And again, that's just not the case. So the movie communicates that you don't want to tangle with demons, but if you do and when you won't have to do so again, and both are lies. And of course the, the fierceness of the demons and the, the demons being able to fight such an outrageous battle in the movie is, um, it's just not possible if you're walking in the commandments. Now, if you're not walking in the commandments, you can really get hurt. And if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, you can get hurt. So you definitely, I mean, they are very powerful beings that are not to be toyed with outside of the fact that you are walking in the commandments and you've been given all power over the power of the enemy. So it really comes down to, are you walking with Jesus or not? Which I, I always go to John chapter 14, which, which I kind of want to go back to and show it to you on the screen here momentarily. Um, because... In John chapter 14, let's see if I can get to it on this screen. In John chapter 14, Jesus talks about the situation by which um, God the Father and the Son will abide with you. And I, I want you to be able to see that. So I'm going to go to that really quickly. It starts in verse 15. Let me get the Bible up on the screen. Sorry for the delay. Where is my OBS? It's right here. Is that the right one? All right, I'm going to pull up the Bible really quick. This is bad form on my part, but actually I'll just read it to you. It won't even be on the screen. How about that? You can hear and listen. It says, if you love me, keep my commandments and I'll pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him for he dwelleth in you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come unto you. Then he goes on in verse 21. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. He that loveth me shall be loved of my father and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Um, Judas said, saith unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which he hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. So, you know, we talk about a lot about Jesus uh, versus Paul on this channel, how Jesus taught to keep the law, and Paul obviously didn't. And one thing about this is that you need to obey Jesus and not Paul if you want the Holy Spirit to abide in you. So going to um, Matthew chapter six, Jesus talks about it there about keeping the law. He says, or no, it's Matthew chapter five. Let me go to it. He goes. Think not that I'm come to destroy the law of the prophets. I'm not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, which it will, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisee, you shall know 
case enter into the kingdom of heaven. So what I'm trying to get across to you is that if you keep God's word, which includes God's law, the part that Jesus fulfilled by shedding his blood was the blood shedding of the first testament of the um, Pentateuch of the Levitical priesthood. And he also fulfilled the aspect that there's no more temple and that we are the temples. There's no more physical building as a temple and that the father and the son make their abode in us. And we are the kings and priests over these temples. So I'm saying all this to, to form a foundation for how you can command demons to leave you and walk in that authority. And it's by obeying Jesus and keeping the commandments as he commanded. He never said what Paul said in terms of if you kept the law, you were under a curse. Jesus said that if you broke even one of the least of these commandments and taught people so, you'd be least, considered least by the kingdom of heaven. Not that you'd be in the kingdom of heaven, but by the kingdom of heaven. And so he's making it quite clear that we're supposed to keep his word. And when you do that, you're going to have complete confidence in you're doing spiritual warfare against demons. And I'm going to talk about this in a minute in this article, but one point I'm trying to make is if you're outside of God's commandments, you're going to have fear. You're not going to feel at one with God the Father because there's going to be a wedge between you and God the Father and the Son through your lack of obedience to the commandments. And that's going to make you afraid that you're not saved. It's going to make you afraid that you're not walking in salvation. And then it's definitely going to open a door and a, and a foothold to demons in your life. And when you do go to command them to leave, you're going to feel, not just feel, you are going to be powerless. So you truly do need to embrace what Jesus said about receiving the Holy Spirit through obedience. Now you can get the Holy Spirit as far as being filled and indwelled by the Holy Spirit prior to you figuring out all the areas in which you're not in obedience to God's word because of your willingness to be obedient to all of God's word, even though you're not fully there yet. But the Holy Spirit's job will be to convict you of those areas where you're not in line with God's word and bring you into line with God's word. And so I say all that to say is that once you receive the Holy Spirit, Jesus said, these signs shall follow them and believe my name shall cast out devils and they shall speak with new tongues. I believe that's a sign of being filled with the spirit, not the tongues you hear in the Kundalini part of the charismatic world, but the real tongues given by the Holy Spirit. I do believe we are supposed to be walking and speaking in tongues. And, um, you know, when the Holy Spirit leads us, it's not something you want to necessarily have to force, but you can obviously pray in uh, the spirit as God uh, leads you. But the point I'm trying to make is you can and will be filled with the Holy Spirit because of your willingness to be totally obedient. And then you can continue peeling yourself like an onion and, and working it out as you dig into the word and decide, oh, I need to fix this. I need to make this right. Yesterday was the feast. Uh, well, it's not a feast because you don't uh, feast that day, but it's a day of atonement was yesterday when um, God calls uh, his people to afflict their souls, which means to me, search your soul for areas in which you can contradict with God's word and make it right. And that's what a believer should be doing on the regular. I mean, we do have one special day a year where we do it. And it was, it was an amazing day for me. Um, personally, I did it uh, by myself for much of the day. And then Chad and I had a conversation where we talked it through and I even asked him, and we talked about each other's own, what we thought about one another in terms of uh, areas in which we could improve, you know, or make our lives line up with God's word better. And uh, it wasn't about condemnation. It's not about, it's, it's about having this hunger and thirst for righteousness that Jesus spoke of in Matthew 5, and you shall be filled. And you should ask yourself, how can I make my life more pleasing to God? Is there something in my life um, or some thoughts that I, I entertain or dwell on that are sinful in my life, or there's some actions I'm doing that aren't right. Search yourself every day and make it right. And then cast out the coordinating demons that are tempting you in those areas. So when you do this self-examination, as far as deliverance goes and casting demons out, you figure out, let's say you're having trouble with lust, lust of the eyes or you know, you've been looking at porn or involved in some kind of sexual sin. Once you search yourself and you say, that's not right. I've got to make this right. Then you say, in the name of Jesus Christ, I bind up the spirits of pornography, of lust, lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh. 
I bind these demonic spirits and I command them to leave me in the mighty name of Jesus. And I'm telling you that if you don't do that, out, if it's out of fear, which is the topic of today, which I keep going on tangents right now, but I'm, I'm just being led. If it's out of fear that you won't command those demons to leave because you don't want to go down that road and you're scared of it, then you're just giving those demons more and more ground. And that's why you're still stuck in pet sins and things that you can't change because you're not practicing deliverance. And if on top of that, you're breaking God's word in some way, not keeping his commandments, then by all means, you're allowing demons more of a foothold, more of a stronghold in your life. And that's another reason why you can't get them out. That's another reason why they're not listening to you because you're in agreement with them through your sin. You have to come into disagreement. Uh, Amos 3.3 says, how can two walk together unless they agree? And so if you're in sin, you're in agreement with sin and you have to walk out of that in order to break that tie with those demons that have had you oppressed. If you want them to leave, you have to come into disagreement with them, come in agreement with God the Father and his commandments. Then the Father and the Son will make their abode in you by the Holy Spirit, and you could tell those demons to leave, and they must obey you. They have no choice. You've been given power over all the power of the enemy. And that's why a day like the Day of Atonement is so important to do that kind of self-reflection and to set aside time each day. If you're struggling with demonic oppression, set aside time each day to just talk with the Father and be like, man, things are still aren't right, and what's wrong here? And um, please help me see if... If there's some secret sin that I can't see that I'm still doing, or there's something about my life that's selfish, self-centered, if I can't break out of, you know, trying to serve myself into serving you and to helping others, if I can't put you first, well, Father God, what's what's standing in the way? And then what you want to do is um, allow Him to move on you, and He'll bring to your remembrance whatever is uh, putting a wedge between you and Him. And then once you do that, repenting, man, your authority will jump up a hundredfold. Well, truly it'll go from zero to a hundred percent because if you're in sin, you're really, you might have a little modicum of power because the name of Jesus has power, but it's not going to be anywhere near the same as if when you come out of sin and come into alignment with God's uh, word, which is his law. Not what Paul said. It's not Paul's law. It's the law of God who never changes he doesn't lie. He's not a man that he should lie. He says, I am God, I change not. It says in Jeremiah, he would do what? But write our laws, I mean, excuse me, his law on our hearts and minds. So it's his law that we keep, especially those uh, 10 commandments. All right, so let's go on. So we were talking about the movie, um, The Exorcist, just a minute ago, and I, I move on. Granted, a movie like The Exorcist is part of the horror genre on purpose, and it's meant to scare you. In, in so being, it is an extremely effective tool of manipulation which serves the before stated purposes. One, it says to you, be afraid and do not tangle with demons yourself. Even trained Catholic priests who in truth serve Satan through their Babylon mystery religion, so it's no surprise they can't handle them, but even trained Catholic priests can't handle them, so that's making people that don't know better that they don't really represent God think, oh man, if they can't do it, I certainly can't. And then it goes on. Uh, I go on to number two, demons are capable of anything uh, and you can't stop them. That's what they, that's what Satan's kingdom wants you to think. They think number three, if you just get them out of your life once, you won't have to deal with them in the future. That's another lie. And number four, after, after you get them out of your life, you better just ignore them or worse or a worse thing may come upon you. And really you cannot ignore the bully. You cannot ignore the bully. They are bullies. They teach bullies how to be bullies. And the bully is going to pick it the weak guy over and over and over again until he stands up and knocks that bully's teeth out. It's true in the world and it's true, especially true in the spiritual world. If you don't search yourself and make it right and get mad and stand up for yourself, man, they'll just keep pushing you around. But you don't realize it's like a barking dog with no teeth just nipping at your heels, gumming you. It's not, he can't hurt you. Nothing by any means can hurt you when you're right with God and you just stand up to them and you tell them what to do. I truly believe, um, I'm going to cite this scripture in a minute, but in Revelation, it says that Satan and his demons are going to make Michael uh, God's, and God's holy angels are going to make war with them and cast them fully out of uh, the heavens into the earth. And I think they're going to manifest in the natural, whether they come as gray aliens or whatever, um, you know, they've been preparing us for through Star Trek and Star Wars and all that, and that they'll, some of them will be peaceful and they'll come to the earth and we should make alliances with them and all that malarkey. Those are all demons, and I, 
I promise you, if any one of them comes to you and you say in the name of Jesus, depart from me, it will flee. It will not be able to handle the name of Jesus. There was a guy in the UFO community that used to track people who um, had supposedly been um, abducted in their sleep by demons. And every one of them that spoke the name of Jesus, uh, those so-called aliens let them go and had to flee. So that's all aliens will be is demons lying to us as usual, because they are liars and Satan's the father of it. So that's all they do is lie. But I'm telling you that now and in the future, the name of Jesus will engender a whole can of whoop on them and they will not be able to resist it. They will not be able to win. It'll be like a 10 foot giant stepping on the tiniest ant. The, the power that we have over all the power of the enemy is immense. One can send a thousand to flight and two ten thousand. So, um, it's an amazing thing that the power and authority that God gives us, not by our own uh, power, but by his power, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. And Jesus again said, without me, you can do nothing. But with Jesus and his name, all authority has been given to us, according to Luke 10 and 19, which we will cite in a minute. So I've seen many young Christians who believe the words of Jesus when he said, Mark 16, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name, they shall cast out devils. I see them often stuck with an ongoing false belief that if they can just get the demons out of their soul realm, which is their mind, will, and emotions, once and for all, I remember feeling this way myself when I first became a Christian. Complete deliverance was my only goal. And I would fight every single day, you know, with other people helping hours and hours and hours. And I'm not saying that wasn't a, a proper exercise, but my attitude about it was, if I can just deal with this, I won't have to deal with it again. I can just help other people. And that was a lie. I thought it could be over and done with. And afterwards, I just live an obedient life and those demons won't come back. And it's just not true. This is the propaganda of Satan uh, because, as I said before, our existence in this world, of which Jesus called Satan the prince of this world three times in the book of John in chapter 12, verse 31, chapter 14, verse 30, and chapter 16, verse 11, we by default share this, this world than in the spiritual realm, at the very least, with devils or demons, as well as with God's Holy Spirit and with his holy angels. Um, these demons are in the spirit world, and they are also able to manifest in the natural from time to time. And um, like I said before, they will do more so when Satan and his demons are fully cast out of heaven, according to Revelation 12, 7 through 9. And these demons are present in this system at all times. I mean, just as God's Spirit and his holy angels are constantly around us as well. So to have this, again, this idea that I felt like was on me when I was raised a Catholic was that, you know, you go to the priest and he prays deliverance over you and, you know, says some Latin words and, you know, does the censor with the, uh, with the burning stuff in it, whatever that stuff's called. I can't remember people that smoke weed, burn it all the time. I can't remember what that stuff's called. And he's burning that, that, uh, ah, oh, what is that called? You'll, well, I don't have the chat room on, but if I did, you tell me. At any rate, you, you think, oh, well, he'll take care of it and you can live the rest of your life normally. And it's just not so. It's not so for us. Because as we've become Christians and entered into this spiritual walk, we are open to that spiritual realm. This is why Jesus said, whatsoever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. And whatsoever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. And binding, even uh, in the scriptural sense, it talks about demons being bound in the great river Euphrates in the book of Revelation. And we use binding as the handcuffs to bind demons. Jesus said, how can you cast out a strong man if you don't bind him first? And so we have the binding in the name of Jesus and the loosing in the name of Jesus that allows us to take these demons into control, much like a cop would when he handcuffs uh, a criminal so he can get control of him and put him in the car and take him to jail. And so it's the same for us. We bind the strong man and we then can command these demons to leave us. And it's just, it just is what it is. There's no reason to be afraid of this, especially when you're the one walking around and through Christ with all the authority. They're the ones that need to be afraid and they will be rightly afraid of that name of Jesus and they will bow before it because they are extremely afraid of the name of Jesus. So there's no reason for us to be afraid. 
So like I said before in the introduction, devils and demons are as much as a part of this spiritual world around us as venomous snakes and scorpions and insects or wild lions, tigers and bears or sharks, stingrays and jellyfish are in this earthly environment. Because of the fall in the garden where the woman first and the man uh, then disobeyed God and partook of the forbidden fruit, the earth has become in many ways a dangerous place and so is the spiritual world around us. But that's what Jesus came to change for us. He made it spiritually um, a place where we could take authority over these uh, dangerous, malevolent beings and walk in confidence with him and enjoy and peace and love and all the fruit of the spirit because of the fact that he did what he did for us and gave us this authority. But if we're not walking in this authority and casting these demons out, you're going to have a spirit of fear just for that reason. If you're afraid of engaging with them, that spirit of fear is a demon and fear is controlling you and a demonic spirit's in your life controlling you. So how can you get the victory over demons if you're afraid of them? You cannot, as a child of God, be afraid of these rebe rebels against your father, God the Father. As long as you're in obedience, walking in agreement with God the Father and Son, Jesus Christ, you've been given all the authority. There is no reason for you to be afraid. Now, I mentioned also before, one way of proving Satan's presence is always here. And, and is something we have to continuously contend with is to see that Satan came to tempt Jesus after his 40 day fast in the wilderness. That was the first, first time the Bible records him dealing with Satan. And Jesus told Satan to get thee hence Satan in Matthew four ten. Then the devil leaveth him and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. So after the three, three temptations where Satan tries to get him to make a loaf of bread out of a stone or to, um, tempts him to, to give him all the kingdoms of the world or to jump off the top of the temple and, um, and the angels would catch him and, and Jesus denied him all three times and he told him to get that hence and he left. But this was not a permanent departure for we know Satan came back to try to tempt Jesus again because when he was telling his disciples about his future crucifixion, now quoting from Matthew 16, 22, it says, Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he, that is Jesus, turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art offense unto me, for thou savest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. So Peter, in that moment, had taken on Satan, who's speaking through his very mouth. And at that point, spirit, Peter was too spiritually weak or lacking discernment to realize what he was doing. Peter, I don't think Peter volunteered to do it, but he was in a state where he allowed it to happen. And that was a, another time where Jesus had to put Satan in his place and tell him to um, get behind him, to get away from him. So that's the point. If Jesus had to deal with Satan on multiple occasions on his walk on earth, so must we. It really is not that big a deal, guys. Once you decide to walk in agreement with God's commandments and obedience and receive the Holy Spirit, you just realize it just is what it is. It's you have some battles, you know, and maybe not every day, but you, you, you pray for people. And every time you pray, you're doing a little bit of spiritual warfare every time, whether it's for yourself, for a situation you're in, or for you see the enemy working through other people in your life, especially through narcissists and Jezebels, you start binding their demons. You start to catch um, more discernment and, and wind of their tactics. You start to see what they're doing and foresee it. And then you begin to bind them. And command them to stop and to leave you be and you start to see the fruit of that and then you realize this is just part of life it's just part of life is just waking up and brushing your teeth and going to the bathroom it just just is what it is and there's absolutely no reason to be scared of demons at all none whatsoever there's no reason to fear them and we'll cite some scriptures on that in a second so again it's really not that big of a deal it, is, it just is what it is we have to deal with demons in this current system we won't have to deal with them in the world to come. They won't even be allowed into the new heaven and the new earth. They'll have no part of it. But now we must, and this again is why Jesus said the first sign that will follow them that believe is that in his name they will cast out devils in Mark 16, 15 uh, through 18. So now Jesus gave us power over all the power of the enemy. Let's go to that scripture. So the demons know that we've been given all power over them and this is why they work so hard to create a narrative where we fail to exact that power. Take this excerpt from Luke 10. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So he's saying, 
I saw Satan fall from heaven. He had sent the 70 out. The 70 um, had done much ministry and they commanded demons to leave people and the demons had to obey. And he said, how? Through his name, through the name of Jesus. And he said, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, which are um, metaphorical represent representations from the animal kingdom of demonic spirits and over all the power of the enemy, nothing shall by means hurt you. So these are people that are disciples of Jesus Christ that are in agreement with him, that are walking in the commandments. Jesus has told his disciples, those who keep his commandments, that they have been given all power over devils and nothing the devils can do, do can hurt them. They, that's a bold statement, but a truth told to the 70 was meant to extract all fear from those who believe, follow and obey Jesus when casting out devils. If any of us are afraid of demons at any time, this fear comes from the devils themselves. And this fear gives the devils a foothold. So through fear of them, fear of these menacing, menacing representations of them and all sorts of media, be it comic books or movies, or especially through, I mean, all of these DC comics and these other comic uh, book stories that show into other universes and whatnot, they always have these horrible looking demonic creatures in them. Star Wars, Star Trek, all of that. All of that is meant to make you afraid. And again, as followers of Christ that keep his commandments, you have no reason. You can see this phenomena, as I mentioned before, with earthly bullies. They thrive on your fear of what they might do. But when you lean into them, and stand up to them, showing them you're not afraid. This is when their weakness and the chinks in their armor appear. It's not until you stand up to them that your superior strength will be made manifest. Again, it's not until you stand up to demons that your superior strength will be made manifest. If you don't stand up to them, and the whole time that you're dealing with them, you're acting mealy-mouthed and wimpy and scared and crying and all of that, it just, that's, that's a spirit of fear in you. That's a spirit of self-pity. That's a spirit of depression and grief. And as long as you walk in that spirit, they've got you. They've got you 110%. But as you rise out and realize these are, again, barking dogs with no teeth, bullies that can't fight, they're all about intimidation. They're all about fear. But they know if you, if you, if you repent of your sins, keep God's commandments, and receive the Holy Spirit to dwell in, dwell in you according to John chapter 14. You can take all authority according to Luke chapter 10 over them. And nothing by any means they can do can hurt you. And you can stomp them under your feet. Like, a, like an ant under your heel. You can crush the serpent's head under your foot. As an aside, it's amazing to me that conservative groups use don't tread on me. Uh, which with a serpent as their symbol when it says in Luke 10, 19, that we've been given power to trample on serpents. So they're basically saying, don't tread on me and representing Satan, but that's another aside. I'm not saying the conservative movement as a whole is satanic, but I'm saying those people that use that symbol are using a Masonic demonic symbol that is derived. If you look at Luke 10, 10 and uh, 17 through 19, you can see it represented there. All right, so let's, let's uh, go on with the article. So we cannot allow the fear of the very existence of demons and the potential for their presence in our lives to bother us in the least. We cannot be bothered with it. We have to think of them as they are, a, they've made themselves a lower form of life, even though without Jesus, they've got a lot more power than we do and can easily tool us. But through the discernment of the Holy Spirit and the power that Jesus gives us when we repent and make things right and walk in the grace and the humility of God, we can have confidence in God to destroy them, to deal with them in a way where we're roughing them up big time and they're not roughing us up. And we must embrace the authority that Christ gives us whenever it is required and use it, acknowledging that there is no once and for all last battle with them while we're alive or while we're living in this system before Jesus comes for the millennial reign when all the demons are cast in the bottomless pit for the thousand year millennial reign and let out at the end of for a little season. And then once and for all, once and for all, for all during the final um, new heaven and new earth, where all the demons in the beast and the whore, they're all cast into the lake of fire, that burns with brimstone and nothing that does any sin will be allowed in the new heaven and new earth. So 
when it comes to that time, we won't have to even deal with them anymore. We'll be delivered of ever having to deal with them again. But for now, it is what it is. And again, it's not we people that are afraid of them are making it into too big a deal. It's I, I say in this article, no big deal. It is a big deal. It's a big deal because God gives you the authority through Jesus Christ, but you cannot get so riled up about the potential of engaging with a demon that you don't do it. It is just something we do. We battle. Soldiers battle. We're soldiers for Christ, and we battle the demonic system that's trying to take us down and everybody we know down with them. Now, this does not mean we have to fight them all day, every day either, like some people are want to do. That's a, that's a type of fear too, where you're just repeating yourself all day over and over and over again in your spiritual warfare, and you're not trusting that what God gave you to say actually worked. You know, and you're just being like the heathens and just repeating and repeating, and repeating. I mean, that that can be a sign of de demonization in a religious spirit as well. And that's another fear they try to place on us, that we will have to fight them continuously for the rest of our existences. And then we, you know, we think, oh, I'll be so tired. How am I going to do this? How am I going to win this battle? You know, God gives us rest and sweet sleep. And once you get to this place where you're not afraid of them, you don't have to live in this 24 seven vigilance to fight them. It's only when God gives you the discernment, Hey, something's off, go ahead and do some spiritual warfare. And then you do it. You know, it's just part of life. And the more you work that muscle, the easier it becomes to just, to just do it, to, to do it by default. You, you almost work a spiritual form of muscle memory where it just happens. And it's just words you have to speak and you're just early recognition of what Satan's trying to do, listening to the Holy Spirit, letting the Holy Spirit direct you as to what you're dealing with um, in the spiritual realm. And then you speak forth those words that bind them and command them to leave. It's really very simple on its face. It's Jesus's burden is easy and his yoke is light. We don't, we don't have to get into these super hyper masochistic, you know, self-flagellating, beat myself with a whip situations where it's just all day, every day, constant battle, the demonic realm, because, oh man, I just got to do it. I'm called to like basically fall on my sword and kill myself when again, it's part of our daily existence, but it, even this can be overdone. And often it's a time, it's a sign of you being demonized in some way that you need to deal with so you can actually have some modicum of joy peace and love and and sweet sleep and and the joy of the lord which is your strength you know some people that get involved in deliverance ministry they're so hang dog and they look like they've been beaten and i i think there's something wrong with that i think they're trying to do it in the flesh and not by the spirit they they're trying to work algorithms and equations they're reading all these books of the if then statements, if you do this, then this, and they take it a little too far. You know, all the people that get all hooked on, on uh, and, and I've read many of these books, like the pigs in the parlor book that I've recommended in the past written by Frank and Ida Mae Hammond. I remember in the nineties when I became a Christian, there were books uh, by, um, Oh man, what is his name? He's passed away now. Oh, I can't remember now. And there's those Derek Prince books that I never felt I jibed with. And I'm not sure why. Maybe he was a Christmas celebrator and an Ishtar worshiper type. But I always felt there's something off with him. And I don't read any of these books anymore. And I don't try to work out um, special algorithms anymore. I just, when I pray for people and for myself, I just like to be, and I feel this is the only way to be led of the spirit. And whatsoever God gives you in the prayer, that's what you need to go with. And you definitely don't need to try to get these demons to talk, which many people are want to do to give you information so you can cast them out. I mean, maybe a, a question or two, like Jesus asked, what was, what's your name? And it said, Legion for we are many. You don't have to like go into these long diatribes of asking all these questions because they're going to lie to you anyway. Jesus said that Satan is a liar and the father of it. So why would you engage with demons and let them talk through the mouth of the person you're praying through over and over again? No, 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 no. You're the one that can he has the spirit of truth and is going to get the truth from the Holy Spirit. So just in my view, just be led of the Holy Spirit. And I've actually had people that I've prayed with that I said, look, you, you cannot keep interrupting me to tell me what to pray for because I could tell that Satan was using them to, or the demons were using the, that person to sidetrack me because I knew God was telling me something different. And at least that's what I was feeling in my spirit. And 
a lot of times people that you're praying for think they know better than you and they kind of try to guide you on praying you and and you know that's fine but if you knew better why aren't you delivered already by you already know why 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 aren't you delivered well maybe i just need help no no something's wrong something's wrong and you need to if you're doing deliverance and you're practicing deliverance for yourself be led of the spirit yeah if god gives you an idea to look into a, a book about deliverance um, look into those books and um, maybe get some ideas. But for the most part, be led of the Holy Spirit. I mean, you can learn about binding and loosing and commanding demons to leave and how the blood of Jesus has an effect on them. That's all in the Bible itself. You can learn that from the Bible too. But I'm saying, and I don't know why I'm saying this, maybe someone needs to hear this that's listening, is that if you're in a deliverance ministry, I highly encourage you to be more apt to, to do with what you feel led while you're praying for other people than what they're trying to get you to say. And I wouldn't go into too many dialogues with the demons that are trying to speak to you through the person because they're liars and they're just going to lie to you. And I've heard people like Bob Larson, who's definitely, he's demon, he's demonic to the core wearing priest outfits and stuff. I mean, it's ridiculous. And he's like, I, I adjure you in the name of Jesus to tell me the truth. Don't even play with that. The demons, they, they can't even tell you the truth. Anyway, I wouldn't mess with that. I would just be led of the Holy Spirit and cast those demons out. And if, if, it's, if you're not getting anywhere or you don't feel like it's being accomplished, separate yourself again and pray again and ask the Father, what's going on here? And let, again, let him lead you. That's the biggest thing I've learned through the years. All the books that Win Worley was another author, um, Oh, there was a third guy that I read quite a bit. I mean, they wrote great books and they, they, they really stirred me up to practice deliverance. But in the end, it's the Holy Spirit that will lead you into all truth about what you need to do. So getting back on this idea, this doesn't mean that, again, we have to be fighting every day, all day, 100% of the day and getting beaten down and hang dog just by our own continuous, like nonstop battle. I mean, I've seen been myself in deliverance where my throat was torn up from how many hour after hour. And I just don't see Jesus having done that himself. I mean, sure. There might be some resistance because this kind cometh not out by, but prayer and fasting, but still I would say if, if you're not having success, look within or, or actually use the, the, the commandments as a mirror and make sure you're right with God and make it right and get alone with him and keep practicing deliverance in your own life and see what's going on there and make sure you're right. And when you pray for others, you know, just be cognizant of being led of the Holy, Holy spirit. That's, that's how I feel about that. These books and the algorithms, they can't trump what the Holy spirit's going to lead you to do. It's like when Jesus said, when you go before um, Kings, Kings and judges for his sake that think not, uh, what to say um, prior to going in there for the Holy Spirit will give you what to say in that very hour. I, I, that's how I treat deliverance. And it, it actually makes you feel so much closer to God because when you see God work a deliverance by His Spirit rather than by some, some mental gymnastics you did to form some algorithms that might work, then you just feel closer to God because he's leading you and you see how he used you. It was more God's spirit using you as a battle ax against the demons rather than, uh, rather than you coming up with some, again, some algorithm, some equational a, a plus B equals C thing. It's just more, it's so much more enjoyable just to work with the Holy spirit and feel that closeness with God's spirit when you do anything, honestly. I'm not trying to denigrate a lot of those books, by the way, because I do think they stir up that they prime the pump for doing deliverance. And I think that's a good thing. So I don't want to uh, sound too negative about them, but eventually you're going to have your own big boy pants on and you're going to be led of the Holy Spirit and, and fight in a way that's completely led of the Holy Spirit. All right. So this next, uh, ca uh, this next section is called perfect love casts out fear. So as the apostle John wrote, there is no fear in love. But perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. So you see, he's saying fear has torment. Well, who brings torment but demons? He that feareth is not made perfect in love. So why would you be afraid? So we said before, if you have this 
this fear of demons that's incongruous with the truth that you actually have more, way more power and authority than they do. And you believe their lie that they can do all kinds of awful things to you. When Jesus said, uh, there's nothing by any means they could do to hurt you. If you've got that incongruous with the truth thought in your mind, you need to settle that, make it right. And again, if you're not walking in the commandments, you need to make that right so that you won't be afraid and have this shaky feeling like if you're not walking the commandments you you're going to have a shaky feeling with god and then you're not going to have that trust with him solidified that if you say something in his name he'll do it for you he won't do it for you if you're not walking in the commandments i'm going to quote from first john in a second where it shows that a fear of demons can prevent your love with god being made perfect because that means you are lacking the trust like that of a child in god that god requires Yes, this system we're in due to our sin is a giant crap hole, excrement hole. I'm trying to use better, uh, less salty language now. Yes, there are some stinky, horrendous, horrible creatures lurking about the spiritual realm, but Jesus has plucked you from the state of being subject to those powers. You're no longer a servant to sin and you're no longer a servant to demons, but he's given you authority over it all, over the whole demonic realm. Over a third of these fallen angels, you've been given all power and authority if you keep his commandments and walk in the Holy Spirit. So we must let go of any kind of fear with regard to demons, fear of their existence, fear that there are so many of them, fear that they can inhabit the spirit realm near and about us, fear that they can inhabit people, fear that they may manifest in the natural at some point, fear of ugly and grotesque many of them are, fear of them inhabiting us, fear of them never leaving us alone, or fear of them gaining advantage over us. We got to stop fearing them in every possible way because again, that gives them ground. All we need is confidence in Jesus, in his name, in his shed blood, a perfect trust in God, the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ, that they have empowered each and every one of us to deal with these demons, to extract them from our lives and to help others do the same. It is the demons who should be, and rightfully so, afraid of us, very afraid, not exactly of us, but of the one who fights on our behalf, for we fight in his name, the name of Jesus. They are afraid of his name because of the power of his name and the power of the only begotten son of God. All right, so we're getting toward the end. You must keep the commandments to walk in authority. And I've said this over and over again. A final caveat that cannot be left out because it can form a basis for all fear in a Christian's life is the fear that naturally occurs when we are operating outside of and against God's word. When so many nominal Christians do as Paul said and ignore God's law and follow Paul's law, it's natural to feel as believers we are on shaky ground when we don't keep God's word. Jesus said this about just such a situation. In Luke 6, 46, he says, And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will shew to whom he is like. He is like a man which built an house and digged deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. But he that heareth it and doeth not is like a man that without any foundation built a house upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great. So if you're not keeping God's word and the words of Jesus Christ, our savior and doing what Paul said and going against God's word and the commandments, um, as Jesus said, we are that he did not do away with them and not one jot or till should be done away with. And Matthew five, then you should be afraid. And why wouldn't you be? And this is why the Pauline church doesn't practice deliverance. This is why you could go into a Baptist church right now. They don't cast any demons out. This is why you go into um, any Methodist, Presbyterian church, any mainline denomination. This is why even if you go into like so-called charismatic churches that say they follow God, they're not casting demons out. The first sign that follows in that belief because they're in disobedience, disobedience to God's word. They're serving demons they're honoring um, idols, Ishtar and Semiramis and Sol Invicta and all the Christmases and Easter's and the crosses and the idols and the idolatry. And they're serving Satan because they don't keep God's commandments. They don't even keep the 10 commandments, which Jesus preached we should keep. So if you're not doing what Jesus said, you will have built without a foundation on the sand if you do not adhere to God's word then you should be afraid because you haven't truly repented and made things right with God. So you're not truly part of God's kingdom. In order to be a part of God's kingdom, you must be in agreement with him and his kingdom. 
Samson's bothering me like he has to go to the bathroom, but we're almost done. Being in sin, you have opened the door to Satan and his demons, so you have good cause to be afraid. It is the getting out of sin and getting in line with God's, war, God's law that gives you the confidence in God's word to battle these demons and not fear them, even though they are in our environment and they're ugly and, and uh, fierce looking and all of that. There's no reason to be afraid of them if you're right with God. John the Apostle said it this way, Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence toward God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. So if you keep his commandments, your heart doesn't condemn you and you're confident toward God and whatever you ask, you receive. And when you take up your um, weapons of warfare, your binding, your loosing, your commanding demons to leave, they will leave in the mighty, holy, righteous name of Jesus. They have to. They have no choice. So this I say then, keep God's commandments and walk in the confidence of authority God has so graciously given you over all demons, including Satan himself. And above all, have no fear about it. It's just another day at the office for you. No reason to be scared. If you are, that means a demon lurks anyway in your life. Someone's calling me from Texas. I don't know who that is. Um... Demons are lurking anyway. You might as well start off by casting out the demon of fear. So, guys, there's just no reason to be afraid of demons. And if you are afraid in some way, you must have broken the commandments. And just start at pray and ask God uh, where you have. And he will probably show you almost immediately. If you're ignorant of his law because you haven't read it, dig into God's word. Read the Pentateuch or the first five books of Moses and figure out what God requires of us and do it and realize that Jesus didn't do away with that. He, the part he did away with was the blood, the blood sacrifices and the, Levit the, the need for the works of the Levitical priesthood because we are the kings and priests and this is the temple. There's no longer a building made with man's hands. We are the temples of the Holy Spirit. That's what Jesus says all um, chapter three, verse 21, beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have comp then have we confidence toward God and whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. So let's go ahead and go into prayer. Father God, I praise you and thank you for this teaching and for helping us not to be afraid of demons and to recognize if we are afraid that that's incongruous with your word and that we need to check ourselves for areas where we need to make it right. And we also need to understand the truth that these, if, if we are walking in you and made it right and have your Holy Spirit, we have no reason to be afraid and we can command all demons to leave us, especially when they try to put lies in our hearts and minds and untruths and temptations to do evil and to do wrong and to break your word. We can bind these demons and command them to leave. We can also reverse their curses and the word curses, the, se the spells, the hexes and the vexes. We can break uh, generational curses, Father. We can do all these things walking in your word because we have been given that power and authority. And you said when any two of us touch and agree on anything, you will do it too. And one can send a thousand to flight and two ten th two ten thousand. So, Father, I'm asking you to set up. Many people are watching this now and will watch in the future. People who are walking in your word to walk together two by two. So they can go out and deliver, bring deliverance to your people, even from home to home and in person, or even on phone calls or over the internet while we still can have some modicum of freedom here. Father, I'm asking you to stir up your people. The harvest is great and the labors are few. Pray therefore the Lord of the harvest, and I'm praying you, the Lord of the harvest, to stir up your people to walk in deliverance so many people can be delivered of lies, untruths, deceptions, and the demons that they represent, and also the sins that can so easily beset people, even those that are uh, attempting to walk with you, Lord. If they're demonized, it's so hard to let go of pet sins. So help them to walk in the mighty deliverance power and not to be afraid to do it. I praise you and thank you for all these things in the mighty name of Jesus. I appreciate everybody watching now. Um, please press that like button if you like what you heard. Um, if you like the music you hear, you can download it free of charge. Reverb Nation, link below. If you need prayer, write us at withoutspot at gmail.com, link below. Um, if you want to donate to us, there's a PayPal um, link below that you can do so. We appreciate all, all those who do. If you um, want to see our new, uh, our older website, withoutspotorblemish.com. If you want to see our blog spot, 
All these are links below, withoutspotterblemish.blogspot.com. That's where this article was written. You can also go to jesusnotpaul.org. Um, that's another one of our sites. And you can check out our other channels, link below, link below, link below, Rumble. We don't really do that one. BitChute, uh, Odyssey, all of that, all links below. I want to thank you for joining us, and we'll send you out in the closeout room with a song, and we will see you on the next broadcast of Without Spot or Blemish Ministry. Thanks again for joining us. Don't see what they've done to your body. They rob, kill, and destroy. They take without fear all that which we hold so dear. But they won't see it coming, and they won't know. Moment you bring them down so low They'll even deny That it's your mighty end When out of the beds they won't stand They won't stand They won't stand Jezebel's judgment day, it has arrived. Deny repentance, they all die. Jesus gave us so much space, but she wouldn't turn. The fullness of the judgment so well learned. They won't see it coming. They won't know The moment you bring them down so low They'll even deny That it's your mighty earth out of their beds They won't stand They won't stand They won't Out of the beds they won't say